so radical, dude! <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to the Tetrahedron VG. With me, the other guy. That's right, I'm looking after the channel for now as uh, Dexter Morrington and Honest Review are both on holiday. Ooh. Of course, they didn't go on holiday together, but they're just having a nice break from the channel and everything. So here I am, putting a video together, and uh, basically everything done by me. So I apologize if it's really shit, um, but uh, hey, I'm just covering. So what am I doing? That's right, folks. We're gonna talk about the Sonic Advance series. Why it's so good, and why it's so underrated. Seriously, they're just so good. But I will not be doing this on my own. I have two lovely people I met online. Uh, hello there, my name's um, Dave. I'm a lover of video games, and um, it's just great to be here. Yeah. Yeah, hello, my name's Cedric, and oh, my microphone sounds really bad, doesn't it? It sounds really awful. My microphone yeah, sounds really bad. Yeah, I totally really agree, bad. my gosh. It's really bad. Anyway, let's start the video. Cue anime montage. The Game Boy was an amazing system. It was the first time you could play games on the go or on the toilet. Oh yes, I remember playing um, <laughs> Legend of Zelda Minish Cap on the toilets for hours and hours. We all thought, you can't get better than this. Then BOOM! Color happened! Oh yeah, the Game Boy Color was like one of my major favorite consoles mm -hmm. at the time. It was great, like especially playing Pokemon. In color. Oh yes, we all liked a bit of Pokemon! I totally agree though, like, you didn't think it could get any better. But then suddenly, the Game Boy Advance happened, and it was so powerful, it shook the world. things about the Game Boy Advance was that the games looked like complete straight up ports from the classic consoles from the Mega Drive and the SNES. I mean yeah, it, it was like the true handheld experience. Hold on a second, didn't you say when you uh, when you contacted me you're, you're good at doing impressions? Oh yes of course, I, I yeah. Could you do a Dexter Morrington impression? Oh my gosh if you can that would be really amazing. Oh uh, yeah sure I can give it a go. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Dexter Morrington. I love Star Fox! That is almost 100% spot on! Oh my gosh, that sounds just like him! <laughs> thank you, thank you! <laughs> That's jokes, man. That's jokes. You know what? I want you to speak like him for the rest of the video, okay? Well, I... The GBA had ports of Donkey Kong Country, Mario World, Mario Brothers 3, etc, etc. And while we didn't get any new Mario platformers, we did get a batch of snazzy new Sonic games. A trilogy and two bonus titles. Oh yes, Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance. Yeah. Uh, Dave, we, we had a problem there. You seem to have um had an audio problem. Oh, um, what happened? He got stuck. He kept saying Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance, then it went dip, 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 and skipped and went straight to yeah. Oh, no, it um, must have been some sort of, like, 
connection error there. Hmm. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Happen again. Happen again. Happen again. It's happening it's again. Happening again. Can you, you know, just, just, just don't talk for a little bit. And Cedric, can you please talk like Dexter Morrington, please? Sorry, I just got confused. The interesting thing about Sonic going to the Game Boy Advance was that Sonic was originally only for the Sega consoles. And this was a big surprise. Sort of like when you find out your friend helped bake cookies you just ate. I can't help it, Tsukasa makes the best cookies ever. Oh, glad you like them. Actually, I helped her bake those this morning. Uh -huh. Yeah, she taught me a lot. So what's wrong with you? Sonic Advance captured everything you know and love about the franchise. From its 2D gameplay, the loops, the rings, the springs, and of course, inspiration from the Lincoln Falcon. I'm pretty sure everything is inspired by the Lincoln Falcon. Well, yeah, the Lincoln Falcon is so underrated, nobody knows it exists. The game contained four playable characters, from Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. Sadly, Amy was treated unfairly, making her the weakest of the bunch. Makes you wonder if this is due to Sega being sexist at the time. Like, may I remind you, she was the weakest in Sonic R. To be different from the classic Mega Drive games, each character was given a cool little add-on move. Sonic had the somersault, Tails had the tail attack, Knuckles just had punching, and Amy had a trusty hammer. A hammer that would make Thor jealous. <laughs> The level design was pretty good. It was a nice mishmash of the classic Sonic games and the modern Sonic games. You'll have levels that remind you of Emerald Coast, like the first level, and then you have levels like the Snow Mountain level that remind you of Ice Cap. And also its um, soundtrack had like a very unique style to its music, and you know, it was a bit like how the Sega Saturn had its own style, and I think that made it, you know, more effective and more engrossing. I think something's wrong with your mic and audio again. Sonic Advance in some ways was a 2D Sonic Adventure, as it went more for the modern route, in its style and design. They also threw in the grind rails and the Chow Garden. But the uh, Chow Garden was okay, you know, compared to the Sonic Adventure 2, it wasn't so good. It was just, you know, it was alright. But it was a nice break from the main game, I suppose. I mean, the game was filled with um, pretty good content, to be honest. I mean, yeah, you had the Chow Garden, which wasn't all that, but you also had, like, Time Attack mode, um, where you had to get the best times and everything, which was actually pretty cool, and it was fun to play. Um, overall, Sonic Advance was a great start to Sonic's transition from Sega to Nintendo. I mean, how can you top that? You know what I mean? Is there any way you can top it? Uh, yes, there was. It's called Sonic Advance 2, the sequel. Ah, yes, of course. Sonic Advance 2 improved everything of the first game on so many levels. Not only was it faster, but the level design was greatly expanded on. I mean, yeah, who can forget that awesome giant loop-de-loop -loop with the amazing Lujima Flip. Plus, there was more stages, fun special zones, new character, Cream the Rabbit, and also Amy was an unlockable character, and guess what? She played better than she did in the first game. Not to mention there was a refreshing take on the boss battles that required you to chase down Eggman, like Pepsi Man! on the toilet really got me straining harder. Yeah, I bet. I'm pretty sure your face was like... The time attack mode also returned in this game along with the boss attack mode, which is basically time attack mode but with bosses. And also the Chow Garden came back, but, um, you know, it's basically the same thing, really, but they had one new mini game with uh, cream and cheese. I mean, that's something. Was it, though? Like, was it? The truth is, Sonic Advance 2 captures the truth. The truth is, Sonic Advance 2 captures the true spirit of what the adventure games is all about, making this the perfect Sonic handheld experience. But sadly, some fans think Sonic Advance 1 is better, claiming Sonic Advance 2 was nothing but a hold forward and too many bottoms pits game. This debate within the fan base is sort of like watching a Bugs Bunny cartoon, with the rabbit season versus duck season. Sonic Advance. 
Sonic Advance 2! Sonic Advance! Sonic Advance 2! Sonic Advance 2! Sonic Advance! Fire! But Sonic Advance 2 still sold really well. It sold well, in fact, that Sonic Advance 3 was definitely on the cards. But before Sonic Advance 3, there was the Sonic Pimp. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, Sonic Pimple Party. I mean, while it was a bonus game to the Advance series, it was just basically a, you know, basic pinball game with Sonic themes. No, actually, there was, there was more layers to it. It wasn't just a basic pinball game. I mean, it had a story, it had knights, it had somebody to meet, oh, and also Metal Sonic was also included in the, um, in the plotline. Oh, big deal. Look, it's Metal Sonic. Ooh, it's in a pinball game. But do you play Sonic in the pinball game? No. You just use the flippers and you send the ball over the place. It was a basic pinball game with Sonic elements. Now, next one, please. Well, the next one was clearly, um... Sonic Battle. Well, the next one was, um... Sonic Battle. Well, the next one was clearly, um, Sonic Battle, yes. I believe. Ah, uh, yes, the second bonus game of the Advanced series. Sonic Battle may not have been a huge hit, but you know what? It was the closest you got to a Smash Bros. on the handheld. Well, that was until Smash Bros. for the 3DS arrived. I'm talking about then! Oh, yes, of course. The Sonic Battle game um, was a pretty good game, actually, for the handheld. It had a lovely 3D-like effect to the levels for the environments. You had about 11 playable fighters, even though it could have had more fighters, to be honest. Uh, the soundtrack was kind of a bit different. Um, quite interesting actually, but there was also a very nice story mode um, for each character um, that played their own part in the story, which was actually pretty nice. And also there was like uh, mini games and uh, lots of multiplayer action. It was basically a good game, but sadly it didn't sell enough to warrant a sequel. What a shame. I would like to play Sonic Battle 2, but yeah, I guess that's not gonna happen. And then, of course, after Sonic Battle, we finally got Sonic Advance 3! Yay! Which, of course, was uh, the final Sonic game for the uh, GBA. No, actually, to correct you there, there was actually um, Sonic Genesis in America that actually came out after, the, after Sonic Advance 3, so actually, technically, there was another game on there, which was a port of Sonic 1. And it was a terrible port, and we do not talk about it. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm just I'm just, just pointing out the, the facts that, that, you know, that the... Zip it! So Sonic Advance 3 finally arrived, and it continued the trends that was established in Sonic Advance 1 and 2. But with a twist. Yeah! You can now team up with two characters. That's right, two. Not three, two. The team up idea sounded cool, but there wasn't much use of it, sadly. Yeah, like while the game had some refreshing ideas to keep it fresh, you can't help but feel like, like you know, the crazy thrills and the... The intensity of Sonic Advance 2 was missing. I mean, it was still a good game, though. Just, you know, I, it just didn't feel the same as Sonic Advance 1 and 2. I mean, yes, I remember that each level, you had to look for Chow hidden around the, the, um, hidden around the levels. And once you got all of them, you were able to access the special stages. And even then, the special stages were a bit of a chore. I remember that, you know, if you failed, you had to get a key to access it again. And to get the key, you had to find them in the levels. Oh, gosh, I remember that. It was really, um... <laughs> there was so much a chore. Yeah, it was actually. I remember that now. Yeah, you had to find the keys and get through and all that other stuff. But it had fun the little minigame bits, little bonus levels. And... But overall, Sonic Advance 3 was a nice, refreshing take on the series. And uh, I think it went out with a good bang. You had the five playable characters, uh, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and Cream. And you can combine the two together. You can have Sonic and Tails, or Tails team up with Knuckles, or Knuckles team up with Cream. And... Amy with Tails. It was really cool, because each character gave each other some, like, kind of new abilities. It's just a shame that they didn't utilize it enough. If you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, come on! You have all this, like, ideas, and you're not using it. Come on! All in all, the Sonic Advance series was very good. It's just a shame that, you know, no one really talks about it anymore. I mean, it got cut out of the Sonic 30th Orchestra. They didn't play any Sonic Advance tunes! I mean, come on! Just why? Oh, I have to agree with that, actually, yeah, because as much as I enjoyed the Sonic um, 30th Anniversary Orchestra, I did feel that Sonic 3 and Knuckles didn't get, like, the the um, the best, um, you know, the best, what it sh should have deserved. It deserved more, to be honest, and I think Sonic 3D was also missing. That soundtrack's actually very good, and, because um, I thought they'd include the Sonic 3D in the Sega Saturn melody. Um, I also felt that, you know, whereas the Sonic Advance, I mean, you've got the Game Gear games, 
but Sonic Advance, let's be honest, was a lot more better than the Game Gear games. I totally agree with you. I totally get it. I'm surprised they didn't include Sonic's Schoolhouse. Like, that's underrated. I hope you're joking. <clears throat> anyway, Sonic Advance was just basically Sonic Adventure in a handheld, and it it was a refreshing take for Sonic. It was a good it was a good starting point for Sega to Nintendo, you know, Sonic to Nintendo systems. Um, yeah, it's just a shame it doesn't get the attention it deserves right now. It's like people appreciate it and like it, but no one really talks about it, which is a real bad shame, especially Sonic Advance 2, which is one of the best Sonic games ever made. I mean, you never know. Maybe the Sonic Advance series might get a re-release on the Switch one day in a collection, a bit like the Mighty Switch Force collection. You never know. That is true. We never know what's around the corner. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. I apologize if this video is not as good as the usual videos. But hey, I'm not Honest Review, and nor am I Dexter Morrington. Oh, well, I am. You're a phony, Dexter Morrington. You're not the real deal. You're nothing but a fraud! And while it's been nice talking to you two, I don't think I'll see you guys ever again. Because uh, while you've been nice, you're not too bad. Um, If I'm honest, you don't have the same wit and charm as uh, Honest Review and Dexter Morrington. Oh, you, you mean we're not, we're not going to be coming back? Oh, I was hoping to um, appear again in a future video. Yeah, we'll see, but most likely no. Anyway, that was my first time covering for the Tetrahedron. Uh, will I do it again? Who knows, maybe. Only if people like the video and uh, if um, they would like me to do another one. But, not with these guys. Well, can you stop being so mean and rude? I mean, you know... We are here. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm a big fan myself, so I, I'm quite offended by this. Well, I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm just saying. Anywho, stay tuned for next month's video as we go with the complete history of Shantae. And yes, don't worry, the main two stars of this channel will return. Alongside with me. Being a smaller role, like I normally do. <sighs> what is my life? Why? Well, I, I still think that, um... You know, it's, it's, it's kind of unfair, the way... Ah, uh, that's enough. Videos fading to black. The end. But I do...